What is going on guys? I finally picked up a motor for the 240 and I'm gonna go over what motor that is and why I bought it. But more importantly, I'm gonna tell you what I didn't get and why. So here's the car, nothing's really changed on it. Uh, I am actually trying to get this front end off right now. So we can go ahead and start getting this lip off, getting the lip painted since the lip is the worst looking part because it's white. The rest of it's black and green so it blends in a little bit better. But the lip all chipped up and looking white underneath just isn't really flying with me right now. So, the motor I got for the 240. Now, for starters, I didn't go with LS. The reason I didn't go LS is because I was really looking at a 5.3 swap. I didn't want to get into the cost of a 5.7 or a 6.0. So, with that being said, the 5.7 and the 6.0 make the power I want. The 5.3, not so much. The 5.3 with the cam, your basic bolt-ons and a tune will only get me about 300 wheel horsepower, maybe 330. So at that point, it just seems senseless to me to swap a V8 into the car and to only make 300 wheel horsepower. Sure, I can add forced induction, I can throw a turbo on it, and I can make five, 600 wheel horsepower with other supporting mods, but I don't wanna throw a V8 in a car to then have to add forced induction to make the same power I could add to a turbo four or a turbo six. So at that point, I decided, you know what? LS isn't the way for me right now. Sure, a 6.0 or 5.7 would be cool. I did really want an LS240 back when I had my BMW way before I had this, but it just didn't seem like the best route to go right now just because I want to keep it budget friendly. This car is more of a priority when it comes to toys and builds, so I want to focus more on this. The 240, I, of course, I want it for a car to zip around town and to slide down the weekend, so I don't think that the LS was the best route, especially after you factor in the cost of uh, the trans, clutch, flywheel, dry shaft, swap kit, because you need your mounts and everything to go in it, and then wiring. So the motor itself would have been cheap. I found one for about 200 bucks, but with everything else that comes with it and then the lack of power, it just didn't seem like the best option to go with. So then that leaves us with SR, RB, 2JZ, or KA. Now, SR right off the bat just didn't make sense just because they are extremely expensive for what they are. So like, like an SR costs more than an RB swap. Why? Why would you pay more for an SR20 than an RB? I don't know, I don't get it, but apparently there's just like some kind of following behind SR guys where they pay top dollar for SR20s. They love SR20s. Me, I've never had one, so I guess I fall into the category of people that don't understand and aren't willing to pay that price. Yet, maybe. Because I'm not gonna say I'll never have SR, but at this moment I just don't want to pay the prices they go for. So, SR is completely out. So that leaves us with 2JZ, RB, and K. So, 2JZ. Funny, I have a 2JZ, you would think, oh, why not go 2JZ? It's the strongest of them. It's reliable, you get your Toyota reliability. I already know, and I have extra parts. I've been dealing with them for years, and I know it like the back of my hand, right? But at the same time, just for all those reasons, I don't want to go 2JZ. I've been dealing with 2JZs for so long, I want something different. Like, 2J, like they're great, but I just want something different. I don't want to keep doing the same thing. So 2JZ, was just kind of out of the question from the beginning. Like I was not too crazy about it. And not to mention, the cost of an NA2JZ motor has gone up significantly. Like people want almost a thousand dollars for a GE motor, even the VVTi ones. Now to break it down real quick, the 2JZ GTE turbo motor, the VVTi and non-VVTi both have the same bottom end. They both have a strong bottom end. You're good to go. As long as you stay below 650 wheel torque, you're good. Some people even go to 700 foot pounds of torque and make 800, 900 wheel horsepower and they last for a while. Now, the VVTi GE motor and the non-VVTi GE motor, different bottom ends, they have different rods. So when you get into a VVTi GE, you're not going over 350, 400 wheel. At that point, you're gonna start popping rods out. So I'm definitely not paying that much for a VVTi GE motor. Now, a non-VVTi GE motor, sure, it's not a bad motor, but you're still looking at almost $1,000 for what a lot of these guys want. So then you still need a trans clutch, flywheel, harness, you have to find a turbo at that point because it's NA. You need a turbo else the car is good. It's not going to run any faster than the KA. So at that point, I decided, you know what, I'm just, I don't really want to go 2JZ for that. For every reason, I guess I said, it's just 2JZ did not seem like a pro to me. If it was a drag car, sure, 2JZ all the way because I'm going to build it anyway. But for what I want to do with the 240, not so much. So. But to even get into the RB debate, I'm just going to say right now, I did go KA. And the reason I went with KA is because I could go KAT for way cheaper than the RB25 swap itself and make the same power. So K seemed like the best bet for me right now. And not to say that I'll never do an RB swap or an SR swap because I do really want an RB car. I just don't want to invest that much time into it right at this moment. And I also want to enjoy the car in stages. I don't mind throwing a K in the car, working out the bugs, familiarizing myself with the chassis and enjoying it at that power level. Sure, it's gonna be slow in a straight line, but I'm not planning to go straight. So. We're gonna do the KA, do KAT afterwards, and then later on down the road, probably do a swap. I don't, 
know necessarily that I want to build the KA, but maybe I'd rather swap it later on down the road. Or if the motor gets hurt or if the motor blows up, then we can look into a swap. But I want to get the car running fast and I want to enjoy it. And I think this will be a good way to, like I said, familiarize myself with the chassis and get comfortable sliding the car. It's been years since I actually wanted to do that with a car and actually had a car that I could do that with. So. All right, so here's the KA I picked up. Not really feeling the color of this valve cover, but that's the least of my worries. It's got an upgraded clutch. I'm not sure how good this clutch will be, but worst case, if it slips, blows up, I'll just go ahead and replace it. Flywheel's a little bit lighter in stock, and it does have a header on it. Other than that, it's a stock KA. So we'll see how it does. Worst case, the clutch slips, I buy another one. I highly doubt I'll have any issues with it being NA. Once we go boosted, that's a different story. I might have an issue, but who knows? We'll see what happens when I get to that point. Of course, there's going to be people that are like, oh man, why he go KA, or he should have went SR, or this motor, or that motor. But this is honestly the most simple way to go about it, and go about the power that I want to make. Any of these other swaps would have required double or triple the amount of money to make the same power. Now granted, some of them might have made a lot more power, but I'm not necessarily chasing power. I'm I mean, within reason, yes, 300 wheel but like five, six, seven hundred horsepower. So at this point, any motor will give me the power I want. It's more so about having a very responsive, peppy, fun motor to make the overall car a fun experience. But yeah, and like I said, the car is where it's been at. And I do have differential bushings and subframe bushings. I don't know if I'm gonna do the subframe first or if I'm just gonna jump straight into the engine swap, but that pretty much sums up where we've been at with the 240 and the motor I picked up. But yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and like I said, get this front lip taken off and get this thing painted black so we'll see how that goes because there's like a million screws on the bottom of that lip so finally got the front end off or most of the front end I'm gonna take the fenders off too to make sure I can get all that stuff back there cleaned up but now that we have this front bumper off I can take the slip off that shit just broke but yeah let's not put a regular nut on here let's put a wing nut so some jackass in 30 years who struggle with it it's front long Real smooth Nissan, real smooth. So I got both fenders off, front bumper off, front lip off of the front bumper. Now, look at all this dirt. Same thing with this side. That's exactly why I wanted to take the fenders off because that that's just gonna cause rust if I leave it there and it's just nasty to think it's there. But yeah, it's off so now I can go ahead and hose that down, clean this all up and then once I have this cleaned up right, put the fenders back on, or if I find a replacement fender for the passenger side, because you see it's kind of ugly looking, then I'll do that. But the fender will probably go back on. This stuff, so yeah, clean all that up, hose it down, and then reassemble. You can see it's not even really rusted. It's a little bit right there, but that's not really anything at all. So it's pretty clean for having that dirt in there for, I don't know how long. I was kind of worried there might be some rust in there, but nope, we're good to go. And there you have it, all cleaned up. I even got the cow cleaned up. Looks like some kind of mold in there, but I am having the windshield replaced anyway because it's cracked. So, it's kind of nasty, but ain't no big deal. So, that's going to wrap up this video. Hope you guys enjoyed the update. Sorry, it's still no driving, but we're trying to get there to Supra. Hopefully I can get the wheels back on as soon because that's literally all we need on the Supra. And I think I said all we need on the 240 was a trans. I kind of lied. I need brakes too. Kind of need to stop. So yeah, like I said, please like, comment, subscribe. Thank you for checking out the video.